Welcome back to the evening show. Now, during the week, I was very lucky to meet Danny McBride, who's here to promote his brand new film, which he's written and starred in, called Your Highness. So take a look at how I got on. So Danny, tell us, without giving away too much, the plot of Your Highness. Well, Your Highness is a throwback to a lot of the uh, sword and sorcery movies of the early 80s, late 70s, things like Conan the Barbarian, Kroll, Excalibur, Dragon Slayer. I grew up with those movies, loved those movies, and so David Green, the director and myself, we both had a big passion for those films, and uh, we really wanted to make one of those movies, like an homage to those films, but try to find a modern comedic slant into the film. In a faraway land, there live two brothers, one brave and bold. The other, not so much. Woo! Courtney, will you make funny faces to entertain me? <laughs> no! Never triangle face. I hate triangle face. It scares me. The star. I'm here to steal a beautiful virgin that looks just like me. Her. And just how do you plan on doing that magic? You must journey with your brother to rescue his bride. Or you can face banishment from the kingdom. Shit. Brother, I don't think you'll need that armor. I will quest the way I like. Here I come. Ow. This quest sucks. If we work together, we can destroy Lazar once and for all. Just say we are too late. And Lazar was able to get her cookies. Would you still want her? What right have you to spy on a bathing woman? I'm simply keeping an eye on her. Oh God, she's looking at us. Remain perfectly still. How are you going to make me love you? If your vagina is anything like my hand, there will be no problem. We will ensure that you run into no danger. With our huge muscles, we shall protect you. Really? Really. That didn't really go as planned. What the fuck? You've got to suck out the venom! I don't want to suck it! You suck it! I can't suck my own venom! Yes, you can! I'll help you! Suck it! Suck your venom! I can't reach you with my mouth! Gordy, suck the venom! I've never sucked venom! Suck it! Nice. Your Highness. Finally. Alone. Cock-a-doodle-doo. Thaddeus? Yes? I've not been able to stop thinking of you. What a coincidence. I was just about to finish thinking of you. And it's almost fair to say that it's a fairy tale meets a stoner comedy. And I believe that this started out, the concept, as a joke back years and years ago. Uh, it's true. This is a, we like to call it a stoner tale. That's what this is. Uh, yeah, you know, David and I went to film school together, so we've known each other for a long time. And uh, we used to play this game where we would come up with titles of movies and then quickly try to figure out what the movie is about, you know. And we've come up with a lot of classic movies that way. You know, Hold Your Horses, which is about a cowboy with no arms. Uh, he has lassos for arms. That one hasn't gotten made yet. But Your Highness was one of those films. We, uh, David one night was like, all right, the title of the movie is Your Highness. What's it about? And I was like, I don't know, Your Highness. It's probably about a prince who gets stoned and fights dragons. And uh, it was just kind of a joke at the time. We threw it away because we do those, we come up with those kind of ideas all the time. But then as the time went on, we just kind of kept coming back to the idea and thinking it was funny. And yeah, and then we actually ended up getting it made, weirdly enough. It's a gift from Belladonna, a symbol of a virgin purity. I hold it and savor it. You do that instead of have sex with her. Belladonna's unlike any maiden in the kingdom. When I first heard her voice, a tear came to my eye. And that tear turned to ice. And I kept that frozen tear, far from my heart that burns with passion. Just say we are too late, and Lazar has had his way with her. Would you still be able to be with her? I don't want to think about that. But just say that we were moments late and he was able to get her cookies. Shut up. Now, the cast is absolutely fantastic. Oscars everywhere. Oscar-nominated uh, James Franco and Natalie Portman. What was it like, 
in those scenes when you're standing between an Oscar winner and an Oscar nominee? Well, at the time, you know, this is actually the movie that they did right before each of them went off to go do movies where they gave better performances <laughs> and get Oscar nominations. You know, I'm not going to take credit for their nominations or awards, but I would like to say that it, perhaps I got them warmed up for it, you know. Sure, got them kind of moving in the right direction. I taught them everything I know. <laughs> Natalie was such a, a surprise in this because it's something that you wouldn't necessarily see her in. Did you twist her arm or did, is this something that she really wanted to do? Uh, you know, oddly enough, she came to us. She was interested in doing a comedy, and, you know, David and I knew that she had a good sense of humor because we had seen the, uh, the gangster rap video she did on Saturday Night Live, and uh, she, we, so we knew she had a good sense of humor, and she was funny. And, uh, yeah, so she came to us and was interested, and, you know, we're not going to tell Natalie Portman now. That's, that's, she's pretty cool. Sure. Yeah. You wrote the story yourself. How much of the script is in the film? Because I imagine there would have been an awful lot of improv on set. Yeah, you know, we, uh, we make sure that the script is tight and it's there so that all, everyone involved with the movie understands the tone and gets what we're going for. But uh, we'll maybe do like one or two takes on page, and then from there we kind of push the script out of the way and just improv. And, uh, and a lot of times the improv isn't even for jokes, but it's just to kind of find the chemistry between the actors, make sure that nobody falls asleep during the scene. You've got to really be on your toes if you're going to improv. What exactly is your problem? You cannot even enjoy yourself for one moment. My quest affords me no such luxury. Not even on a tender night like this, the moon's glimmering. On a night just like this, I return home from a hunt to find a bloodbath. Nothing remained of my six beloved brothers. I wear this bracelet, forged of the steel of their shields, for constant reminder of my vow to avenge them. My only advice would just be to keep your head up, hang in there, live every day to the fullest. Have sex as much as you can by campfire when you're all alone and your brother is out gathering wood. Just simple things like that. There's a lot of uh, interesting stunts in the film, and I believe you did some of them yourself. And it's not often that we see a carriage ride chase in the films these days. Yeah, well, we had an incredible stunt team who uh, really, like, nailed a lot of this action, and uh, I had an incredible stunt double, and, but David often makes me do things that regular actors would not do. He just, he likes to put me in dangerous situations. He thinks that it's funny, and so I have to crawl out of this moving carriage, just speeding down the road, no harnesses, nothing, just doing it the old-fashioned way. What I really liked about the film is the fact that it's almost like 50% of the idea was to keep it really, you know, great special effects, great costumes, and keep it really serious, but the other half is to completely pull the piss out of it. Like, was that something you really wanted to keep a balance? Yeah, we really did. You know, we didn't want to make it just a straight spoof. We really wanted to make one of those fantasy films and then kind of approach it, you know, the comedy from this weird juvenile perspective. You know, to us, this is like a love letter to the 13-year-old pervert in David and myself. These are the kind of movies that we would have died to see when we were a kid, and that's really what we wanted to try to achieve. I want to be king. Maybe we can both be king. No. I want to be king by myself. Well, cheer up, brother. I have something else that you can be. What? Best man at my wedding. I can think of no one else I'd want by my side. Sounds tedious and boring. If I'm not mistaken, it is a tradition that the best man gets to lay with the bridesmaids. Plural. Really? I've never heard of this tradition. Deal. Oh, you're gonna be so handsome. Who's gonna be the most handsome best man? Probably me. Who's the prince with the most dashing mustache? Me. Who gives the warmest hugs? Me, of course. I love you, Thaddeus. Oh, that's cool. Now, it was filmed in Belfast, which we're very proud of, and the scenery looks absolutely amazing. Why did you decide to come to Belfast? You know, we were given the budget of a comedy for this film, but we needed something the size of, like, Lord of the Rings. But no one was going to give us that amount of money with as dirty as we wanted to make this movie. <laughs> so we really needed to find a location that, like, uh, that had a big epic scope to it, so that once the actors were, you know, in this setting, the movie would ultimately feel a lot bigger. And when we scouted, uh, you know, around Belfast and Tullymore Forest and Giant's Causeway, these locations were just beautiful. And they, it was honestly kind of how I'd always imagined the setting when I was writing it. So, uh, yeah, David and I just kind of fell in love with the countryside and really pushed hard to be able to shoot there. As we are on the same path, I suppose you boys may follow me to Maldestarton. From there I seek navigation and march alone. We thank you. And may we have your name? I'm Isabel, the last living member of the Harsh Barger Order. Well, Isabel, my brother and myself will ensure that you run into no danger while you travel with us. With our huge muscles, we shall protect you. Who? Protect what? 
To be fair, everyone will protect each other equally, I'm certain. But we will protect her more because we are men. Now, it's been left open-ended uh, at, the, at the end of the film. Do you think that there will be a part two? Uh, you know, that's really up to the audiences. If, people, if there's a demand for it, I know we had a blast making this movie, so I don't think it would be too hard to talk people into doing it again. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a matter of if audiences actually want to see more of this story or not. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for telling us all about it. And I know that it's in cinemas now, so hopefully all the Irish will go out and support it. Go see it today. It's the best movie ever made. I don't know if you heard that or not, but it is the best movie anyone has ever made. Such a funny film, a brilliant cast, and Danny McBride, a real gentleman, such a funny guy. And if you want to go along and check out Your Highness, it's in all cinemas right now. Now, just before we go, it is competition time here once again on the evening show. We have a fabulous 200 euro voucher to give away to go and visit the Global Hair Academy. To be able to chance to win, all you have to do is answer this very simple question. Where is Global Hairdressing based in Dublin? Is it A, Grafton Street? B, Thomas Street, or C, Henry Street. You can email your answers to the usual address, the evening show at city.ie, along with your name and details. And you could be the lucky winner. And don't forget, the Global Hair Academy have a new hairdressing course starting up shortly. So if you are looking for a change in career or want to learn a new skill, make sure to check out their website, globalhairacademy.ie. Well, that's all we have time for on the programme tonight. Jimmy will be back here on Monday. He will be here at 7. We repeat at 9. Do join him then. But until then, have a lovely weekend and we'll see you soon.